welcoming today Miss Rita Carroll. Give her a big hand. She's playing for us today. Uh, Miss Vicky's out of pocket today, and we're going to start off with one of, we heard this Sunday at Harvey's Chapel, and I told Cole we got to sing that, this old house, all right? Y'all remember that? This old house once knew my children, this old house once knew my wife, this old house was home in comfort as we fought the storms of life. This old house once rang with laughter, this old house heard many shouts, now it trembles in the darkness when the lightning walks about. Well, ain't gonna need this house no longer, ain't gonna need this house no more, ain't I got time to fix the shingles, ain't I got time to fix the floor, ain't I got time to all the hinges, nor the windows, window panes, ain't I gonna need this house no longer I'm getting ready to meet the saints this old house is getting shaky this old house is getting old this old house lets in the rain this old house lets in the cold on my knees I'm getting chilly but I feel no fear no pain but I see it morning. We're so glad you're here. We're going to sing a little bit. We're going to enjoy this time together. So just uh, let's just enjoy this time with the Lord. Let's go to him in prayer. Let's ask him to be with us. Father, thank you for a joyful time already to sing about this old house. Lord, we're just passing through this world. We just pray that you'd bless our time together this morning and tonight. As we air this, as we put this before folks, and as they listen, I pray they would learn and love you and find you and seek your face. And, Lord, we love you. Thank you for the privilege. I pray for all those in our hospitals, those in the nursing homes. Lord, those families that are struggling today, just be with us. Forgive us of our sins. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All Amen. Right. All right. I want to know more about my Lord. Let's sing that together this morning. This world of sorrow, I'm on my way to glory land. I'll not turn back for some tomorrow. My trials here, I'll understand. I want to know more. I want to know more about my Jesus. Yes, I, do. I want to know yes, more. I want to know more about my blessed Lord. I want to know more. I want to know more. 
blessed Savior. favorites number six he set me free of that number 58 there's a new name written down in glory and it's mine oh yes it's mine let's sing that together this morning i was once a sinner but i came hardened to receive from my lord this was freely given Sing the story. 
has come home for there's a new name written down in glory and it's mine oh yes it's mine oh yes it's mine oh yes it's mine with my sins forgiven i am now for heaven never more to roam now how many of y'all know that y'all know that how many the first time you ever heard it I knew the chorus. Okay, all right. I, I, Cole was looking at me. He said, brother, I don't know about this one. I just don't know about this one. All right. Well, y'all did a good job on that. Let's try it again. I was humbly kneeling. Here we go, Miss Rita. I was humbly kneeling at the cross, fearing not but God's angry frown. When the heavens opened and I saw that my name was written down. Was written down. morning when all the dead in Christ shall rise I'll have a new body praise the Lord I'll have a new life on the resurrection morning when all the dead in Christ shall rise I'll have a new body praise the Lord I'll have a new life eternal gone in weakness raised in power ready to live in paradise I'll have a new body praise the lord i have a new vibe i'll have a new home a eternal with the redeemed of god to stand there'll be no more sorrow no more pain there'll be no more strife no more strife just raised in the likeness of my savior ready to live in glory i'll have a new body praise the lord i'll have a new life i'll have a new body praise the lord i have a new life glorified with him forever death will be lost in victory i'll have a new body praise the lord i'll have a new life i'll have a new home alone eternal with the redeemed of god to stand there'll be no more sorrow no more pain there'll be no more strife no more strife raise in likeness of my savior What a hallelujah morning when the last trumpet of God shall sound. I'll have a new body. Praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. Graves all bursting, saints all shouting, heavenly beauty all around. I'll have a new body. Praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. I'll have a new home of love eternal with the redeemed of God to strive. There'll be no more sorrow, no more pain, there'll be no more strife. Savior, 
mercy. Somebody else is going to have to preach, all right? I don't know what's going to happen here. Well, see, this is my prayer. The next one, your sermon, it won't be very long. <laughs> all right, let's sing that one together, number 72. 72, all right. It won't be very long till this short life shall end. It won't be very long till Jesus shall be sent. And then the dead of Christ from beds of clay shall rise to meet the Lord and King up yonder in the skies. It won't be very long, it won't be very long till Jesus shall appear that day.
thank you for this time this morning that we've had just to come and to sing these beautiful, wonderful hymns uh, of yours this morning. God, I thank you for, for Miss Rita coming today and, and playing for us, God, and just thank you for this time that we've had. And God, uh, even though we don't know what will happen tomorrow, we know who holds our tomorrow, God, and we find rest and, and solace in that. God, I pray for Brother Kim as he comes this morning, God, as he opens up uh, your word and continues through Psalms 119, God, that you would be with him. Uh, God, speak to him in a mighty, mighty way. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you. Good afternoon or good evening. Good to have everyone here tonight. And, and this morning, thank you again, Miss Rita, for coming. Thank you, everybody, for being here this morning. What a joy it is to see everyone. It always blesses my heart. This is one of my favorite days of the week now uh, to get to be with you guys and enjoy this time together. Uh, we're going to go back to Psalms 119, so take your Bible. We did uh, the first two uh, alphabet, the uh, Hebrew alphabets last week, Aleph and Beth. Today we're going to do Gimel, uh, and uh, we're going to start at verse number 17. So if you will, take your Bibles. If you got that, say, I got it, all right? Psalms 119, uh, verse 17. Now, did anybody find, I gave you some homework last week, did anybody go home and find those two verses that I told you? Yeah, Miss Polly said, I forgot. Nobody else actually said anything. But I told you there's two verses in Psalms 119 that does not say anything about the Word of God. So I'm going to let you do that again next week. And I'll tell you, but you got to look for them, okay? There's two verses. There's 176 verses and 174 verses of this, this passage of Scripture, which is the longest book uh, in the, the longest chapter in the Bible. There's two of those verses that doesn't mention or say anything about God's Word. The whole thing is, is reflective of God's Word. And, uh, you know, Sunday morning when I preach, I shared with you we're connecting people through the preaching of the Word of God. Now, folks, this is what we preach, this book right here. We don't preach out of the Reader's Digest. I don't preach uh, uh, somebody else's theology. I preach out of the Word of God, and that's what we're supposed to preach. And so right here this morning, we're going to take this, and we're going to open it up. We're going to see what God has to say. Can I have an Amen. Psalms 119, and we're going to begin, if you will, at verse number 17. So, again, if you have a study Bible, your study Bible says at the top of this verse, G-I-M-E-L, Gimel. And so it speaks to us, that's the Hebrew alphabet, uh, it's like A-B-C, so it's the, it's the C of our alphabet, okay? So if you will, let's look there, and beginning in verse number 17, the Bible says, Deal bountifully with your servant that I may live and keep your word. Deal bountifully with me. Now, as we begin this, uh, we find that the psalmist found four very simple and essential things here uh, for his own soul from the word of God. Now, guys, we as God's children always need to be looking how we can refresh ourselves, how we can renew ourselves, how can we be restored by the Holy Spirit that leads us, guides us, and directs us every day of our life. Can I have an amen? Amen. I mean, that's what he's telling us, and he speaks to us about those things. And so he says, deal bountifully. Deal bountifully with me, with your servant, that I may live and keep your word. It, you see, what it says, this, this word, the word of God, bestows or gives life to our souls. It gives life. See, the world wants to take away. The world is always taking from us. The world is always there with its hand out, and the psalmist here writes to us and says, Lord, deal bountifully with your servant, with your child, that I may live and that I may keep your word. Folks, that ought to be the desire of our heart. Now, if you will, go back with me in your minds when God gave the Ten Commandments. God gave the law. Who was the lawgiver? Who do we say the lawgiver was? Moses, that's right. He gave the law. Now, could anybody in this room or has anybody ever since God gave that law been able to live up to the letter of the law? Of course, no. None of us can. The psalmist says in 119 verse 17, he says, Lord, deal bountifully with your servant, with the child of God, that I may live, live my life to keep your word. Now, as I said, Moses gave the law. None of us in here, no person that ever lived except one, his name is Jesus. He lived the letter of the law. He lived it. He could do it. Where everybody else has failed, he overcame. His name is Jesus. Say amen. 
He's our Savior. He's the Lord and Savior. But when he came, the Bible says that he came and gave mercy and grace. When he gave us mercy and he gave us grace. Folks, I'm telling you, uh, all of us in here this morning, we deserve to die and go to hell, don't we? We really do. I don't care how good you are, how nice you are, how, 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 how uh, generous you are. It doesn't matter. The Bible tells us for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And here, the psalmist wants us to get. He says, Lord, I want you to deal bountifully with me, your servant, that I may live and that I may keep your word. Lord, I, I, as, as I was listening, reading Dr. Phillips this morning, uh, earlier he said he wants the Lord to bestow life on our soul. You see, this is where we get life, is here from the Word of God. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life right here from the Word of God. That's how we live our life. That's how we understand and how we grow as a child of God. So keep that in mind. Verse 18 says, Open you or thou my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. Now, again, remember, he's talking about the Word. He's talking about the law. He's talking about what God has written to us and given us to share. So he gives us, he said, Lord, open these eyes. So I, lost people are blind. Isn't that right? Lost, they're blinded to the light. They're blinded to the Lord. Even many of us Christians sometimes in our walk, we get blinded, do we not? We get blinded by difficulties and heartaches and trials and, and things that come in our way. And so when we do that, we find that, that we need the Lord to come back and say, Lord, open my eyes. Open my eyes, Lord, as a child of God. It brings light. Not only does it, does it, does it bring life, but it brings light. Jesus said, he told us in the Sermon on the Mount, you are the light of what? The world. You're the light of the world. That's our job. So here we not only find that, 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 that the Word of God brings us life to our soul, but it brings light into the depths of our soul. And see, he says, and he, he says there in, in that verse number 18, he says, open my eyes that I may see the wondrous, the wondrous things from your Word. From your law so so guys remember this law the word of god this word that god's giving to us is something that's good for us now how many of you ever like getting a whooping i didn't never did like it still don't like it when my wife whoops me i mean i'm not teasing all right but but, but you know god whoops us doesn't he doesn't he tell us that in the, in the book of Hebrews about being disciplined? If you've not ever been disciplined, you're probably not a child of God. I'm going to say you're not a child of God because we all need to go to the woodshed every once in a while. And so the psalmist here tells us, Lord, open these eyes. Help me to see that I may behold the, all the wondrous, amazing things. So light gives light to our soul, this light that he's asking us to see. And what happens in verse number 19, he says, I'm a stranger. I am a stranger uh, in this earth. Hide not your commandments from me. It banishes loneliness. Have you ever been in a big room full of people and felt so very alone? So by yourself? Sure. I remember, uh, and, and, and I just go to this, when Lana and I have traveled, when you as a church have sent us to Greece, uh, many of the road signs were written in Greek. Now, I've had Greek but folks, I want you to know something. My Greek ain't very good. Never was very good in school. I told y'all, my wife, she graduated magna cum laude. I graduated old laude laude. Can I have an amen, all right? That's how I graduated. But, but it was written in Greek. And the street signs where you're supposed to go was written in Greek. And I didn't, I mean, you know, if I might could make it out, I could do, but I wouldn't know what it meant. It would say 1st Street or 2nd Street or 4th Street or, or, or whatever. And then uh, we've been to Jerusalem, and we, they have names written in Hebrew. I have took Hebrew too. But understand, when you go to a foreign country, you, you, you don't know their names. You don't know their language. This morning I opened up some mail. I, I've been gone for three or four days, and I opened up some mail, and it was a, about my health insurance. And, he, and, and I opened up one of the pa, la, mass, pla, pff, last two pages. Those last two pages was written in, in uh, Polish, was written in Russian, was written in, in Spanish, was written in all kind of other languages. I didn't know what they meant, but it meant what I was said in English that I understood. It said the same exact thing. So see, a lot of times we are in a place where we all might be in a bunch of people and we all may know them, but we're just by ourselves. We're just lonely. 
and understand this we find that we're a stranger we're just strangers we're just pilgrims passing through are we not we're not here for a long while we're only here for a short while some of us here are longer than others some of us here are shorter than others and we find every day life gets even shorter i got a whole lot more behind me than i have in front of me so the scripture here tells us when david writes these things he said i'm a stranger in the earth just passing through Lord, please don't hide. While I'm here, don't hide your word, your commandments from me. I want to know what they say. I want to know what they mean. I want to know you greater. That's how we get to know God. Are you ready? Are you, are you with me? Say amen. That's good. So, so he says there in verse number 20, he says, my soul, my soul, if you will, uh, breaks off or, 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 or uh, breaks for the longing that it hath in thy judgments at all time. My soul breaks for that in your judgment. There it is again, at all time. You see, it bears my soul, what's on the inside. You see, I, I, I believe human, humanity has been created with an with a empty on the inside. Everybody's got an empty in here. And you're going to fill it up. People fill it up. Children start filling up. Teenagers fill it up. Young adults fill it up with something that they want purpose for. Folks, we've been made, God made us for a purpose. That purpose is to worship Him. That's why we're here. We're to worship Him and tell others how to go to heaven. As I've said time and again, we're just one beggar trying to tell other beggars how we're to get the bread. Hey, come here. This is where to find it. So here, the soul, our soul, the depths of our soul, breaks with the longing for your judgments. It breaks for those things. We need that, Lord. It, 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 it's the longing of our soul, the empty that we feel in here. We're going to fill it up with something. Folks, we need to fill it up with God. Say amen. And I'll be more specific, spill it up with Jesus, okay? There's a lot of religions in the world that have a God, okay? Now, folks, when people start talking to me about God, uh, the first thing I want to talk about, well, who's Jesus? Because if you don't have Jesus, you don't get to God, okay? You don't get to the Father. The Bible says, he who has seen me has seen the Father. Jesus said that. He said, if you want to get to the Father, you got to get, come through me. Jesus tells us in John chapter 14, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. you got to go through him. And so, so when we read that scripture, here this verse just jumps out at me and says, my soul, the empty here, what I'm longing for, it breaks with, with, with the judgments, for the word of God, for the righteous. And he says in verse 21, he says, you rebuke the proud, the cursed who stray from your commandments. Now, are we not all have a certain bit of arrogance about us and we're pretty proud that we can do this on our own, that we, we're all right, I mean, I can handle this. You know what? The song we sing on some Sunday mornings is, Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour, I, I, there's, I, there's not a moment in the, my day where I don't need the Lord. Not one moment in my day. And when I open up this word and when I begin to look at here in, in verse number 21, when, when, when he talks about what happens to the man, he says, Lord, the proud, if you will, is that domineering man, that, that man that's cursed by God. You see what happened in the book of Genesis chapter 3? When God told us, actually in chapter 2, he told Adam and Eve, the day you eat this tree, this from this tree, what are you going to do? You're going to die, okay? The day you eat that, you're going to die. But he also told us, he said, so when he came looking for Adam and Eve that day, when he came looking for them, he said, who told you where you were naked? Who, who told you that? Have you eaten from the tree? Of course, they had to bow their head in shame. Yeah, they had. From that moment on, mankind humanity has been cursed we've been cursed y'all and 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 this man here this domineering man he says you rebuke the proud i'm proud adam thought he could do it on his own eve thought she could do it and didn't need god god's hiding something from us no god didn't hide anything he was just trying to tell the truth he was just like trying to let her know you don't need that now how many of you as parents have told your child your son or your daughter please don't do that please please don't do that don't, don't, don't do that. Don't touch that. Leave that alone. Why? To harm them? No. We did that because we knew that would cause harm in their life. We knew if they did this, this is what the results are. Now, I hate someone to say, 
I told you so. You know what I mean? But it happens. And here I believe the Lord talking about rebuking the proud. That's me. That's you. That's us. The cursed when we stray away from his commandments. God doesn't say, hey, he said, thou shalt not commit adultery. He, God doesn't say, uh, God does say this. He says, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not have other gods before me. Thou shalt not. He tells us all these things. We shall. Does he do that to hurt us? No, he does that to help us. He does that to encourage us. He does that to lead us, to guide us, to direct us. So when the proud here, we, when we stray, kind of like that sheep, y'all remember we talking about the sheep, what the sheep gets to eating, he gets his head down and he gets off the beaten path and he gets away, he strays off the path and he gets away from God and he gets away from God's word, he gets away from God's thing. So again, he's a proud. Verse 22, he tells us in verse number 22, and I, I love this, when we find this a deep de, de, despair and dislike uh, and he says there in verse number 22 he says this is the man this is the man remove me from reproach and contempt for i have kept your testimonies god keep me away from those things and that's what god's trying to do y'all when he corrects us he's trying to keep us so that we can keep his word so that we can do the, the word of god because we can live this word because that's the only thing that i see uh, here and, and, and this is just an observation I was in a meeting yesterday in Little Rock and with several of the uh, pastors on the executive board <clears throat> and we were talking, we had a discussion group about um, uh, what, why aren't we reaching uh, any more kids from 12 to 17 anymore? Why aren't we reaching those children? And, 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 and we begin to talk about that. And we begin to talk about uh, it, it, when you guys were growing up, when you had a child 12 to 17, let's say in the 70s, uh, 60s and 70s, Folks, we didn't have all the things that are alluring our kids today. We didn't have those things. You, you were at home. You stayed at home. You had lived in your community. That's what you did. Now, those things were there. They were available to us. We understood that. But why want you to understand today, the church is competing. The Lord is competing for the souls of men. And I believe it starts in those children. And we said, last Sunday, I was so thankful that little girl walked forward and was saved. That was so good. I, I shook her hand before church started, and, and she just had a big old grin on her face. And she come over, I had, was bowed my head over here. And that little girl came forward, and she looked at me and tugged on my shirt. Brother Kim, I'm ready to be saved. I'm ready to know Jesus. And I thought, that's just the coolest thing. Folks, we have got to teach and train. Why aren't we reaching them? Is because we've got so many other things in the world. And we as adults have gotten lazy of doing our job to tell them about Jesus. We say, oh, somebody else will do that. That's, somebody else will take care of that. You know, we, 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 I find next month is the month of June. And, and in June, we all honor our fathers for Father's Day. We really need some men to be the men of God so that children who don't have a father in church, who don't have a father, period, whose father is gone from them so that they will know what a real man looks like. We need real men. Can I have an amen? We need real men that know what it is to serve and love God. He said, if, if we could be that man that says, Lord, I've kept your word. I've kept your testimony. I'm not bragging on that. I'm just saying, Lord, if because of your grace and your mercy, I've been able. He said, remove me from all these things. Get them away from me. Get these things that would reproach me and cause me not to follow in your steps because I don't need that. I need to get away from those things. I, the, Paul tells Timothy, he says, flee from youthful lusts. Get away from them. Run as fast as you can. Don't stand there and let them, you know, I, I can't keep the birds from building a nest. I, I, can, I, I can't keep the birds from flying over my head, but I can keep them from building a nest in my hair. Isn't that right? So, so there's the thing that we have to realize. The psalmist here is telling us this hundreds of years long before, and now he speaks today to us as we say that. Look at verse number 22. He says in verse number 22, he says, remove the reproach. Then he says in verse 23, princes also sit and speak speak against me now when you find that there's there's dangerous things that's out there people are always harming and always want to do battle and always want to 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 throw somebody under the bus so to speak um you know guys i've learned that uh, probably there's not any of us in here that want our closets to be cleaned out by somebody else does that make sense amen 
I mean, we don't want anybody to go through our closets and see all of our dirty stuff. We don't want, and, and here what he says, the princes sit and speak against me, but your servant meditates on your word. You see, the, word, the man of God knows where to go right here, right here. Study the word, stay in the word, be on top of the word, allow the word to do what needs to happen in your life. Then he says in verse number 24, and I love this, he said, your testimonies are also my delight and my counselors. Your testimonies. When I read this book, I was reading this morning in the book of Ruth um, and how that God used a kinsman redeemer to redeem Ruth and her mother-in-law and how God blessed through that, how that God had the, 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 the right person at the right time, at the right moment, at the right place. I still believe in divine things, don't you? I believe in divine appointments. I believe God puts us in the right place at the right time. I really do. And, and I'm so always so amazed at that. Um, just give you, a, for instance, on Monday, I had to leave early and drive to Heber Springs. I had a, a funeral in Heber Springs on Monday. And uh, uh, it was a, a, a grandmother and a grandfather. Uh, the grandfather had died 23 years ago, and they had cremated him. And now the grandmother had passed away in December uh, and during the COVID thing. And so the family was getting together, and this was the day. And she turned 100 on that day. That was why we were burying her, because she was 100 years old. And so we were, we were visiting, and we, I did the funeral and, and finished the funeral, and we had lunch with the family, and I got to visit with the family, had a great time. And then so I had to be in Little Rock on Tuesday, and so I had gotten a room uh, in Little Rock, and so I went to a good friend of mine. His name's Scott Horrell. Many of y'all remember Scott. Uh, Scott played ball with me. He and I were best buddies growing up, and so uh, uh, he has a business in Little Rock, and so uh, I walk into his, drive up to, drive from Heber Springs, go to Little Rock, and get to his business. And when I get to his business, I, I walk in the door, and his wife is the receptionist, and he's over here, and his son's back here. And so I walk in, I said, have y'all got any free money? He works in finance, okay? He, I said, y'all got any free money? And she just looked at me, and Scott just turned and like, what are you doing here? And, and so I giggled and we laughed and, of course, we went, come in, man, good to see you. And so we, we, we relegated and talked about things for just a minute, and then he invited his son in, and his son made us some coffee. We just had a good visit. He said, Kim, you're not going to believe this. He said, at 12, 30, 1 o'clock, he said, I was doing my prayer time. He said, and I prayed, Lord, I need some wisdom. I need some guidance. I need some direction. He said, and lo and behold, a little after 3 o'clock, you show up. <laughs> now, folks, I'm going to tell you something. I believe in those. I, I, God had me on it. He had Scott. He was, had Scott on my heart all day. And I, I thought, well, I could go see David Odell. And I said, I, I hadn't talked to David in a long time. David's at Second Jacksonville. And I, I thought, well, I could go see David. And, I, and then uh, I got another friend that lives on the other side of Little Rock. Well, I could go see him. And I thought, no, you need to go see Scott and, his, and, 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 and visit with him. And when I did, I thought, man. That's a divine appointment of God. That was my divine appointment and, and with him. And so we visited, and uh, to, it was just such a good visit. And his son has been dealing with some stuff, and, and I, got so, I was so thankful for this. And he talked to me about following the Lord in baptism. He said he, he'd been saved and had never been baptized. And he said, Brother Kim, I need to do that. And I said, man, I can help you out. I can fix you up. And so we talked about that. I read Acts chapter 8. I shared with him about Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch, about how that, uh, the Scripture, he opened the Word of God. He preached to him Jesus. And after he preached to him Jesus, uh, they was coming along. And he said, here's water. What hinders me to be baptized? And he said, if you believe with all your heart. I said, Brad, do you believe with all your heart? He said, I do. And so I was there for that. I was there to share with them. Now, I'm hoping they're watching tonight, and I just want them to know that how God used them in my life to encourage me to follow the Word of God. Do what He says. Do what the Word says. So, guys, I want you to understand. The Word says here in verse 24, your testimonies. When I read this book, I read about Ruth. I read 1 Samuel. Remember, I preached on Mother's Day about that dear lady, Hannah, who prayed and asked God for a child. And she said, Lord, I'll give him back to you. And the priest was sitting there, and he was watching her at the altar. And she, he was, she was praying intently, and as she was praying intently, he thought she was drunk. He said, why are you drinking new wine at this hour? I said, I'm not, I'm not drunk, sir. 
I'm just praying, and she was praying in earnest. When's the last time we've really prayed that hard for someone and prayed that much that people thought, something's wrong with them? You see, I believe with all of my heart that these stories, these testimonies are delights. God has that to delight in us. We are there because God says, this is where I want you. This is what I want you to do. You may not say, do anything but just have a smile for somebody. You may not do a thing. And that's what we've done the last year. We've not been able to smile anymore because we've been wearing our mask, hadn't we? We haven't been able to grin at anybody, you know, uh, and, and talk to them. You know, you just had to look your eyes and raise your eyebrows and say, how you doing, you know. But, but this is a different world we live in. We've got to realize God has a plan. And his testimonies, his word, this book right here, helps us, guides us, leads us, and directs us. Let's listen to him. Let's follow the word of God. Let's pray, all right? Father, thank you today for everything that you do. Lord, as I open up your word, Lord, I am so amazed at how you use life and you use our life things that happen. And Lord, you want us to follow in your steps. You want us to, to listen to your word. You want us to be all that you've caused us and called us to be. Lord, you've di directed us in the path of our lives. As, as Miss Rita comes to the piano and begins to play for us this morning softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. I'm just praying this morning for you, sir, for you who may be at home, for you, ma'am, who may be here today who's just really struggling with life and just having a tough, tough, difficult time. And so today, I, I believe God's got a testimony. He's got a word for you. He's got an appointment for you. And you've stopped here for a reason today. God has on your way. He's got a plan for your life. And I'm praying today that God would use you and he would use you in a true great and mighty way. That his life would be uh, blessed in you. And so today, follow him. Trust him. Follow the statutes and the word of God. Follow the word of God. It'll lead you where you need to go. He tells us all of sin. He tells us he loves us. He tells us he cares about us. He tells us, he says, if you don't believe, you're already condemned. So it's time to believe so that you won't be condemned. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Let's not be condemned. Let's trust God today. Whatever your need is, today can be a great day. Let's sing that this morning, softly and tenderly. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. nothing like coming home I, I went to Paducah on Friday and Saturday came home Sunday got back in the car and drove out again cold when he looked at me this morning said there's the world traveler and I hadn't got too, about, about too far from home but you know what there is no place like home and folks one of these days God's going to call us home home and my prayer is that you will come home it's, it, it, it's just a joy to know that God's got a plan for us and I pray for you. If you need Jesus, put your trust in him. Love him and let him love you. Let me pray for you, Father. Thank you today for the word of God. Thank you so much that you encourage us through your word, through life experiences, through the things that we go through. I'm asking, Lord, today that you would bless us, take care of us. Lord, and I pray for those who might be in need tonight. If they need uh, uh, someone to talk to, we're here. 
Father, there's a divine appointment for some of our folks, and I pray that you would use them to reach others for you. I pray, God, this Sunday when we come to worship, we come to have a, a good time of worship, when we come to worship you, and, and Lord, just enjoy the, the fellowship time on Sunday afternoon. Lord, that you'd give us something we hadn't had in a long, long time. Bring us back together again. Help us to fellowship with one another. Help us to love each other and help us to pray for one another. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Thank you, everybody. God bless you. You didn't know there was so much in Psalms 119, did you? I told Cole, Cole said, how far are you going? Oh, we're going through 40 today. We didn't make it. We didn't make it. We sure didn't make it. But we're glad you're here. Thanks for coming. Anything we need to share? Not right now. Not right now. Okay. Thanks, everybody. God bless you. Have a great week. We love you. Okay?